We need to talk about the fact that outdoor grown cannabis produces unique chemistry and therefore likely unique bioactivity compared to indoor cultivated cannabis. Why is this important? Many, many, many people, including myself, prefer outdoor cultivated cannabis because it just feels better. But now, actually, as of last year, we have the evidence to support that from a chemistry standpoint. So today we're going to talk about this paper published in 2023 from Columbia University called Comparison of the Cannabinoid and Terpene Profiles in Commercial Cannabis from Natural and Artificial Cultivation. Let's start this video with talking about why the cannabis plant even produces all of these molecules because that's kind of the basis of why this paper is important. So remember cannabinoids like THC, CBD, CBG, terpenes like caryophylline, myrcene, limonene, all these awesome molecules that the cannabis plant produces, it's producing them for a reason. And most of the time that's to protect itself from the environment. So in the case of cannabis, when we think about the glandular trichome, the part of the plant that's producing most of these molecules, it has both chemical properties that are protecting it, and it also has physical properties that are protecting it. So the physical properties are pretty easy to conceptualize in our head because if you've ever tried to roll up some of that sticky, icky weed, you'll notice that your fingers get really sticky, right? And that stickiness of the trichomes helps protect that plant from some of the environmental dangers like insects trying to eat the plant, right? So the insect is going to get stuck on the trichomes and it's not going to be able to eat the plant anymore. And then, of course, we have the chemical component of defense on the plant's part, where the plant is producing certain molecules to protect the plant from other insects that might be trying to eat it, or maybe larger animals like deer or rabbits that might be trying to get a little snack, or it's producing molecules to help protect it from the sun. Because yes, plants can get sunburnt too, and we need to make sure that the plants are able to produce enough of the antioxidants to act kind of as a sunscreen to protect that plant from the environment. So that's why plants are already producing all of these bioactive compounds. And of course, we benefit from these too because we're essentially just big old insects walking around. And since the plant has co-evolved with these insects to specifically target their brains, and we're just a big old insect with a big old brain, we enjoy the effects from ingesting this plant and having these molecules interact with their brain. And these molecules don't kill us like they might for for some plants. Like for tobacco, nicotine is acting as a molecule that helps kill predator insects that are trying to eat it. But for us, since we're so big and our brains are so big, it doesn't kill us. It just feels great. So kind of similar story with cannabis that we are just these big old insects and we benefit so much from that co-evolution of the plant and of insects. Back to this paper. (laughs) So we've known for a long time that the mineral content, the nutrients, the soil composition, the amount of light, all of these things play a critical role in what that final flower product is going to look like. But we've never had a study that directly compared using the same genetics, the same clones grown indoor versus grown outdoor, what the differences in the chemistry actually looks like. And not just the chemistry, but also the physical components, like how sticky it is. And this paper just shows some absolutely amazing insights. So as I kind of just mentioned, but these are the general methodology of this paper. So we have clones, N of three, which is not a huge N, but we'll take it for an initial study. An N of three for two different cultivars, A cultivar is the same thing as a strain. So you have one strain that's grown indoor and outdoor, and then you have another strain that's grown indoor and outdoor. And there's three replicates for each of those. And then they harvested the plants at the same time, so they had the same amount of time to, to grow. And then the authors looked at the metabolic profile, meaning all of the different chemistry that these plants are producing to try to understand the differences. And then they used tools like PCA plots to actually actually graph that. And a PCA plot is this this really cool tool for research to show differences very easily on a multivariate system. 
we won't get into the the methodology of PCA plots, but I will definitely show the plots here. First, what I think is the most interesting thing that was found in this study is that both for cannabinoids and for terpenes, there were more of them produced in the outdoor sample, so you have a greater diversity, but also you had more oxidized and degraded samples, so kind of broken down molecules, found in indoor cultivated plants versus outdoor. Now that's a little counterintuitive, at least for my brain, because to me I was thinking, okay, outdoor has this harsher environment, so maybe in the outdoor environment you'd actually have more oxidized and degraded molecules, but that's not the case. And I'm gonna tell you what the hypothesis is um, from the conclusion of this that was discussed by the authors, because I think it's a really great hypothesis. So both for terpenes and cannabinoids, I'm gonna read off some of these oxidized products because they're not very well known, uh, because they're never tested for and they're very rarely researched. So some of these oxidized uh, cannabinoids include CBN, CBNA, hydroxy-CBNA, CBNBA, CBNDA, CBEA, CBT isomer 1, and CBT isomer 2, and then some other ones as well. Interestingly, these are also some of the molecules that are actively produced during the smoking process when you apply high heat to cannabis, aka when you smoke it. CBT, CBE, um, CBL, CBC, these are all examples of this. So what the authors hypothesized was happening here is the fact that an indoor cultivated cannabis variety is not producing as many antioxidant molecules. And these antioxidants, this is the reason for the secondary metabolites in that plant. And if the terpenes are not present to be able to act as an antioxidant for that plant, that means that more and more molecules are going to be degraded and oxidized and not in their um, inherent form. So this is neither, I, sh I shouldn't say it's good or bad, but essentially these are just more unknown molecules that we really don't know the bioactivity for. So they're likely not harmful, but we don't know anything about them. And we know that they're in higher amounts in the indoor cultivated samples. For both the outdoor cultivated varieties, the authors found a greater diversity in the actual molecules being produced for terpenes and cannabinoids. So you had way more variety in the outdoor cultivated samples compared to the indoor cultivated samples. So some of the terpenes that were remarkably higher in outdoor versus indoor cult cultivars were uh, limonene, beta-myrcene, beta-caryophylline, alpha-humulene, alpha-bergamontine, alpha-guanine, uh, germacrine B, and then a few others. What you'll notice from this list is a lot of them are sesquiterpenes, which are the larger molecules. So who knows exactly what that means, but I'm sure that plays a biological role in the outdoor cultivated samples versus the indoor cultivated samples. Now, interestingly, we have seen a steady decline in the percentage of terpenes present in flower. So we're not getting as much of that terp flavor. And I think part of this reason is because we only have indoor cultivation now. If you smell some outdoor weed, I'm literally trimming this right after this video. So ironically, I have this right in front of me. But if you smell outdoor weed, it not only often smells more pungent, but it has a unique smell compared to indoor cultivated cannabis. And the authors also found that it was, in fact, much more sticky and more pungent compared to the indoor cultivated samples. Similarly, with the cannabinoid profile, um, there was big differences in what was being produced indoor versus outdoor, but the cannabinoids that really stood out were cannabichromine, CBCA, the acid ver version, because this has not been decarboxylated or activated yet, also CBDA as well. Um, these were all significantly higher in outdoor samples compared to indoor samples. Oh, and I should also mention that Delta 9 THC was higher in the indoor samples, which is important because this is the main driver of our legal market as well. Overall, because the outdoor varieties are able to produce a larger swath of molecules, like literally more chemical diversity compared to indoor, 
and at higher amounts. This is a ton of rationale to use this data as science, as advocacy, to allow us, one, the right to cultivate outdoors, um, both in the legal market. We should be able to have greenhouses and outdoor facilities as well as indoor facilities because for patients that don't have access to outdoor cannabis, you may be limited on the actual therapeutic potential of your cannabis product. I brought this paper up to the state house last week when I was talking about how we need at least, at the very least, we need greenhouse cultivated cannabis in New Hampshire. We only have indoor cultivated cannabis available to our medical patients. And I genuinely think that is a disservice to um, patients, to our industry. I also think we should all be able to grow at home outdoors, although I know that's a bit far off. And I also understand the appeal of growing indoors because it is a lot safer for a lot of people who don't have access or they do not live in a state that allows them to cultivate outside. Again, I think this research is really validating to something that a lot of us already knew because of our preference for outdoor grown cannabis. But I guess my question to you is, do you prefer outdoor and grown cannabis or indoor grown cannabis? Comment below. Thanks for watching. Mad love. And feel free to ask any questions in the comments as well.